I have also gone to Paula Ferry Freedom School, Hollinger K-8, and Lyme River Elementary. Going to TUSD schools for elementary and charters for middle and high school, I've noticed some major differences. At my elementary schools, only about two to three students could use a computer at a time, and if the whole class had to use a computer, you'd go to the computer lab. But even then, not everyone was guaranteed a working computer. But when I moved to the charter for middle and high school, there were computer cards with working MacBooks and Chromebooks for all of us to use. You can even use them at your desk, which was a real advantage when you're doing a project. You can have the project on one side and your research on the other. This helped create a less stressful work environment and helped me to learn better. Another big difference were the class and school sizes. In public school, it was a feat to learn everybody's name in your own class, let alone the whole school. But now at Apollo and City High School, it's hard to not know everyone's name. It's hard for students in public schools, but imagine being a teacher, having to learn everybody's name, but also having to learn how to interact with them well, so you can know how to help them grow as a learner. Smaller class sizes allowed me to better get to know the students and the teachers and creating meaningful relationships so I knew that this school was where I wanted to be. While my high school has field trips every month and there's a computer card in every room and the whole school meeting every week, we don't have a gym or an athletic field, a library, or even a crosswalk in front of our school. Shouldn't schools have all of these things? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Woo. laughs> Better technology, meaningful relationships between students and teachers, and everything else a child needs to learn and grow. With a fully funded education, all schools could have these things. A lack of funding for our schools has also impacted me as a daughter. My mom is an educator. She drives buses for a local school district. And she was recently assigned to a new bus. This bus does not have air conditioning. That's not okay. When she asked about their long-term plan for this, they said to stock up on ice and water and remind the students to get their own water bottles because they didn't have the money. See, this lack of funding not only affects us in the classroom, but also even just getting to the classroom itself. With a fully funded education, we wouldn't have to worry about these things. We wouldn't have to choose between a field or a field trip. Today is to figure out about how to fully fund our education, because you're not just funding our schools, you're funding your own future. Sophia Greenhill, and I'm an incoming senior at University High School. So at UH, 